Well, it's finally here, the Apple card. Yes, the Apple credit card. Fun fact, this is the second time I'm recording this video because I forgot to hit record the first time. Fun stuff. In any case though, you might've seen my Instagram post about this where I made a hilarious joke where I photoshopped on some credit card numbers and then some people thought that I just gave away my new credit card number all over the internet, which was the joke. Some people didn't get it. It was funny. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, by the way, it's absolutely hysterical. You'll probably die of laughing from looking at it. It's just at Theo Joe. You will notice though, if you look at the card, there are no numbers in fact on this at all. It just has your name, some logos like the Apple logo, the Golden Sachs, MasterCard, that sort of thing. Very simple, clean interface, very much Apple style. And yes, it is indeed just basically a sheet of metal. So it's very sturdy. You're not gonna bend this thing like you might a credit card. Very cool feeling at least. I know you guys have probably seen videos and pictures of this card already, so I'm not gonna dwell on the looks of it. What I more wanna focus on this video is like things like the sign up process, some of the features, that sort of thing. So hopefully you'll be interested in that. So basically what happens when you get this card is I personally got an email because I was on the wait list and you can sign up for the wait list before it actually goes fully public. I think they're slowly rolling it out, but I got an invitation and then after that it showed up in the wallet app and I am on the iOS 13 beta, so if you're wondering, yes, you'll still be able to sign up for this even if you're on the beta. So you go into the wallet app and then you'll now have an option to choose Apple Card, which is new, and then you put in your info, you do things like scan your driver's license, and then yes, it will run a hard credit check, so be aware of that. And then after I put it all in, you submit the application and then right in the app, right away, you'll get a decision and right away I was approved. <laughs> Your interest rate on the card is going to depend on your credit worthiness, it says. It's gonna range from 12.99% to 23.99%. Now, my credit score is outstanding, so of course I got the lowest rate of 12.99%. Wow. And they also gave me a pretty surprisingly large credit limit, which is always nice. Of course, not that the interest rate on the card matters to me personally at all, because I have literally never held a credit card balance. I always paid off in full every month. So kids, if you're still in school and they have not taught you this yet, just remember, if you can't afford to pay off your credit card every month in full, you probably shouldn't have spent that money in the first place. Just know that. In fact, I probably don't even imagine myself ever using this card. That might seem strange to you, but I figured, you know what, I'll get it for the video, and then I'll be able to have a higher credit limit, and then that will lower my credit utilization ratio, which will then increase my credit score. Did I mention I'm gonna change this channel to Theo Finance? <laughs> Just kidding. In any case, after you get approved, you'll then go through some basic settings. For example, if you wanna set it as your default payment method, that sort of thing. And then you actually get to choose whether you want it to order the physical card. So you can choose to not get the physical card if you don't want it for whatever reason. It doesn't cost anything to get the card and then they ship it off in a few days. Mine arrived in like two days or something like that, which was really fast. And then after it arrives, it comes in this little white case, I guess you could say, and it tells you to just hold your phone up and then it activates the card just like that. Super easy, just like you'd hold it up to AirPods or something like that. Now, one thing I found interesting is that according to the app, there is apparently a separate credit card number for the physical card compared to the digital Apple card that you get in the app if you don't order the physical card. So by this, what I mean you can see here is in the app, it'll show you the full number of the regular Apple card under card information, but then it'll also show you another section that shows the last four digits of the physical card number. So it does seem like there is no way to actually see the full number of the physical card. And I'm guessing this is just so it kind of forces you to separate the purchases and maybe offer a little bit more security if it's more likely that the physical card is gonna get stolen, well then that makes it a lot easier to separate the purchases. You don't have to disable the other card number. Now let's talk about some of the rewards. The cashback is a big feature they're pushing. So basically with the physical card, anywhere you use this that doesn't accept Apple Pay, you'll get 1% cash back pretty much anywhere you use the physical card. And then you get 2% cash back any place that does accept Apple Pay. But I do assume that you're gonna have to use Apple Pay with it. So you're gonna have to use like the NFC feature at the card reader. I think if you actually use the physical card at a place that does accept Apple Pay the other way, then you'll only get 1%. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I would assume that's how that works. And then you can get 3% cash back 
in any payment to Apple, whether that's the Apple store, like you go and buy an Apple hardware device or whatever online, or if you use the app store, buy an app or even in-app purchases. So if you do find yourself doing a lot of in-app purchases and subscriptions and that sort of thing, the 3% cash back might be pretty beneficial to you. And another nice thing is that you get the cash back the next day. It's not like some cards, they only give it to you once a month or once a quarter, which is most cards I actually think. And another cool thing is if you make a purchase with the physical card, it'll actually show you on a map where that purchase was made. So if you're like, hmm, I don't remember where that was or the name is weird and something like that, then you can just look on the map. Oh, it's at the Starbucks or whatever. And then you can see. When you go to pay off the card, it has a really nice interface where you kind of drag it around a circle and it'll show you how much interest you're going to pay in the dollar amount, depending on how much you choose to pay off of that balance. I obviously have not made any purchases with this as of yet, so it's only all going to be grayed out, but it is nice that they kind of show you like a little red amount to a little bit discourage you from paying the minimum balance, which is just gonna drag you into credit card debt if you end up always just paying the minimum balance. Not good to do that if you didn't know that already. That should be hopefully common sense. And actually, there are some more features that haven't really been advertised that are part of the MasterCard network because this is a MasterCard. If you go into the settings, you'll see a little button that goes to view network benefits. And then here you'll see some MasterCard specific benefits. So for example, you get complimentary identity theft monitoring. You have to sign up for it, but it is complimentary with the card. And then also complimentary shop runner membership where you can get free two day shipping in some places. So if you didn't know about those, check them out. I don't know why they're not really advertised along with some of the other features, but they are there and you do have to kind of enable them. So if you're not looking in the settings, you didn't know about them, you won't get those. And of course, as for security, if you think your card gets stolen, one or the other, whether the physical card or the digital one, with the physical card, you have the option to lock the card. So if you're like, oh, I can't find it, it might be stolen, then you can lock it and then it can't be used. And then if you're sure it's gone, then you can request a new card. As for the digital one, if you think that gets stolen, you can just request a new number and then I guess it'll just instantly change everything right there. So it's super easy to change everything around if one of them gets stolen. So the big question you're probably gonna be asking yourself is should I get the Apple Card? And obviously this is gonna be very personal, but one thing I definitely wanna point out, which is a point that MKBHD made on his channel, is that this is probably gonna just lock you down even more into the Apple ecosystem more than anything else. Because it's one thing to say, oh, well, I really like iMessage or I really like using these other Apple features, so I'm not gonna switch to Android because I can't use them anymore. And then it's another thing to have your credit card rely on using the Apple ecosystem ecosystem. And then if you decide to close the credit card, there are real credit implications on your credit score potentially for closing that card. For example, I'm not going to get into super detail about all these, but one example might be if this is like your first credit card, then if you close that card, it's going to shorten your credit history to the next one that you opened. And if you don't have any other credit cards, well, that's going to be really bad and lower your credit score potentially significantly. It'll also lower your total credit limit and maybe increase your credit utilization ratio if you now have one less card on there. So this is something you really need to consider, even though they make it super easy to get this card. Card, it is a real credit card with real credit implications, whether you sign up for one or end up closing it later. So I would say if you do even want to consider getting an Android phone at some point in the future, then it's probably best to not get this card if you don't think you're going to have an iPhone forever, because I don't know how it's going to work where if you end up stopping using the iPhone, will you be able to use the card at all? Will you have to like keep the iPhone around and activate it? What if it, you know, goes out of date? Will you then have to close the card if your old iPhone stopped getting iOS up? updates, that sort of thing. You never know. Me personally, I would say that I just think that this is going to be for people who just love the Apple ecosystem. You know, they might use Apple Pay for everything and they want to be able to use it in places that don't even accept Apple Pay and they just want the Apple card just because they love everything Apple. I mean, sure, go ahead, get the Apple card. But if you don't have a real specific reason for wanting the Apple card besides the fact that, oh, you know, it's an Apple product, so therefore I want it, then maybe it's not the best to get one. I mean, there's not really anything super above and beyond any other credit cards you can get. A lot of credit cards out there have one to 2% cash back and even more in other categories, maybe even more than 3%. And there's plenty of other cards out there that have no fees. So it is something you really need to consider. I personally would not say 
that you should get this card just because you can, because it, I believe, is probably a little bit designed, at least, to kind of lock you into the Apple ecosystem. I'm sure that's at least something that they considered when they created this product. So as for me personally, I probably wouldn't recommend it, again, unless you have a real specific reason to get one, but for everyone else, probably just hold off and avoid it. Now, speaking of Android, if you guys want to keep watching, I made another video recently talking about Android features that iPhone does not have. It was a fun video. If you think that's going to be interesting, I'll put the link right here. The little box will just pop out so you can click on it right there. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.